Today's lab is revised from the SQL injection attack lab provided by Seed Group. Here is the official, official description. So you can come here for further information. There's a description. And we are going to complete the first two tasks. In this uh, description, the overview you may read by yourself, we have discussed this part last week. And the two attack surfaces, SQL statements, select and update statements to compare this uh, SQL injection. And the counter measure prepared statements we will learn uh, this Wednesday. The lab environment is a web application with a MySQL app and the database. And it's configured and set up well for us by the city group. Here you can see this, uh, see the labs. It's a web application. The backend is a MySQL database. If you want to have a refresh about the configuration, read this part. The patch configuration. Now the lab tasks. We are going to attack this uh, seed labs SQL injection, this uh, website, snow SQL injection. In the database, here we see uh, the employee information is listed in this table. Uh, we have about uh, six users here. And the login password, you can see uh, seed admin, seed alias, and the tag, and so on. This is the information, for example, admin, you can log in as a seed admin. Here as a seed, he or she can see all the employees information. and here her profile can be edited. It's a quite simple toy web application. Task one, get familiar with SQL statements. And we have practiced this uh, during our lecture, so can create a folder for today's lab. Lab 11, open a terminal window. First, log in to uh, MySQL. You want to find uh, the database used in this application. Here you see the name is called users. Use users. You can have describe.
we want to find all the tables. We can show tables first. That's one table, right? Called a credential. With the schema of this credential table. We have so many fields, ID name, EID, salary, birth, social security number, and so on. If we want to find all the records, yeah, all the records. Alice, Bobby, Ryan, Sammy, and so on. And I mean here. And if you see some long string, this long string or the hash code we have. So what the hash code is used here? When you read through this uh, guide, you can you will be able to find it, or you can find it from the source code. Here it uses a quite simple hash code. I think it's a short one. So we can open a new terminal to have a look. Here we echo that password, for example, uh, for the admin's password. The admin's password is a C Ubuntu, right? C Ubuntu. Then you use a SHA-1 to find the hash code. But you see uh, they're not the same. AFL, AF, so they're not the same. So you need, uh, we need to check the source code to find uh, how it generates this uh, hash code. How do you find that uh, source code? What the source code or under that uh, for the wall www? Right? And the SQL injection. So we can go to that folder to have a look. Here are all the source code. And check this. Uh, Currently, we use this unsafe home.php. You can see the edit the back end at the front end. So now, now let's check this uh, unsafe home.php to have a look. When you scroll down to see the password, here you use Shava to uh, generate the password. Oh, here you can see Shava. So why we didn't get the correct path, uh, hash code when when we use a terminal? Here Can find that uh, logging in part. Here is a password. And we want to find that uh, how that hash code is generated.
Here you see the use Shaba, the import password to generate this hashed password. But we also need to find this Shaba function. Do you think this Shaba function is a built-in function or no PHP? Well, we may find, uh, let's see, where could we find, uh, if it's a customized function, then we need to find the value test. That is quick way you can use a grab command. Here this grab command, you can see how to use it. For those students from ITS uh, 372, they know how to use this uh, grab function, grab option pattern followed by the, uh, those files. For example, grab I hello world from those files. So we can use a uh, grab I job one from all those PHP files. Then you find all these uh, SHA-1 function. And you see there is no definition about this SHA-1. It's all used directly, which means this is a built-in function, right? Here when you check all this source code. So you can check uh, PHP show one function. Here it says it calculates this show dash burn hash over a string. By default, here this draw is optional. Default is false. It will give us 40 character hex numbers. So when you check, the output here. Now this is the admin's password. Maybe I make a first check this admin password. Here, admin password is seed one two. I didn't have any typos here. I do use a seed of Ubuntu. But we get a different result. It looks like this show one function in PHP is not the same as the show one function here we pro provided by the system. This is weird. Now we may check it later. Uh, for task two, SQL injection attack on the select statements. As we discussed during the lecture, we will use a comment.
suppose if we don't know a user's password, could we be able to log into this web application? If we know the source code, for example, today, lots of application, web applications that use uh, open source. So we will be able to analyze the source code. Right? Here for this program, the source code is provided. So when you check this part, you can see how it works inside. The username, the password, they're all using the get request. So which means the password, you can see it inside the URL. Here you see this uh, username, admin, and the password. Right? Password is the seed admin. Okay, I, my mistake is password is seed admin, not seed of Ubuntu. So seed of Ubuntu is for that uh, SQL database. So now we check this uh, short one, seed admin. We get this uh, this one. This one is the, exactly the hash code saved in the database. Here, did you see it? Right, they're exactly the same. Using raw hash to save as an alternative password is not a good idea. Usually, we we need to add more random information, for example, sort. And uh, for those students from ITS. Uh, 350, you should know how to enhance your password. So now when we check these uh, six statements, yeah, the conditional, the condition where name equals input name and password equals this password, they're using a single quote here, quote to this, uh, Hashed password, code to this username, and that password, input password, is hashed with Shovan to generate this uh, hashed password, then supplied to this uh, SQL statement. Now, how could we uh, supply? If we don't supply a password, could we log in into this uh, web application? There we have two subtasks. And we also need to analyze how it works. Here's the login page. It works like this. If the name is admin, then you will show all employees' information. Otherwise, just show the login uh, employees' info. Else, authentication fails if the password is not right. Real problem, authentication fails. Now let's have a look on this uh, subtask one. The task is to log into the web application as the administrator from the login page. So you can see the information on all the employees. And we are shown that you don't know the administrator's uh, common name, which is admin, but you don't know the password. And you need to decide what to type in the username and password field to succeed in the attack. Subtask two, repeat the subtask one, but you need to do it without using the web page. And you can use the command line ports, such as curl, which can send HTTP requests. One thing that's worth uh, mentioning is that if you want to encode multiple parameters in the HTTP request, you need to put the URL 
and the parameters between a pair or single quote. Otherwise, the special characters used to separate parameters such as M then symbol will be uh, interpreted by the shared program and change the meaning of the code. Here is an example how to send the data, a username and password. Right. You can do it uh, like this. And here we need to pay attention. We need to include special characters in the username and password field. We need to encode them properly, or they can change the meaning of the request. So if you want to include a single quote in those fields, you should use this percent twenty seven step. And if you want to include white space, you should use percent twenty. But in this task, you do need to handle the HTTP encoding while sending requests using a curve. The last subtask today, we'll print a new SQL statement. So in the above two attacks, we can only steal information from the database and it will be better if we can modify the database using the same vulnerability in the login page. And the idea is to use the SQL injection attack to turn one SQL statement into two with the second one in the update or delete statements. In SQL, some column is used to separate two SQL statements. So please describe how you can use the login page to get the server run two SQL statements. Try the attack to delete a record from the database and describe your observation. So these are the tasks we are going to complete today. The first one, we don't know the password. Here's a typo here. We don't know the password. So how do we uh, type in the username and the password of here to succeed in the attack? Here we need to go back to this uh, source code. How it uh, worked. We can check the source code. We can analyze the login logic here from here. First, we get the username and the password generate the hashed password. Then check if it's a, uh, if it has exist login section session. Here when you check this part, username, hash password, use empty. Okay, if they are not empty, right? Session name and the session password not empty, then you will get the username and the password. Here, for example, let's have a login with, a, with nothing. We type, type login, the calling information provider does not exist. If you type admin, for example, let's type Alice. Without password, it says the count information does not exist. So you check the source code. Which part it says the count information does not exist? Here you need to create a six statements to find the user. This one is uh, connect to the database. Then let's see uh, here, create a connection. Then this uh, 
part this SQL query to authenticate the user. We have a username here, have, have a password here, and this password none. So how could we provide a comment here? Maybe we need to provide a comment just after this name equals input name, right? To comment up this part, then we will be able to uh, log in without a password. So how do we provide the comment as we have demonstrated, for example, this admin. Let's try Alice. Since this password, we don't want to provide anything. If it's a comment, then it's okay, you, you provide anything, does not matter, right? The main idea is how do we provide a comment of this username, Alice? We want to see the source code here. This condition, name equals input name, and we want to comment out this part. So one idea we need to uh, terminate this username, then followed by a pound key. We know pound key is a comment or a double dash, right? So I click login. Now you see it's a logged in, which means the SQL injection worked and uh, that password part and this whole part is commented on. If the dash dash, for example, Bobby, we want to comment out with the dash dash. Click login, it says there is an error. It still ask for the password. Add one more M space. It worked, now it works like this. So why is that one when I, I don't put a M space at the end of that dash dash, it does not work. You may analyze uh, from this source code. So if I put dash dash without uh, ending space, what happened here? Why that cannot be commented out? So you can think about that by yourself. Now the second uh, task, second subtask from the command line. From the command line, you, we use this uh, curl and we wanted to know that the login, here this login, we use this, uh, this part index.html, but when we type a uh, username and a password, you need to check here, this is uh, the page, process or input. But the login in page is index.html. So you, Pay attention, this is not the right one, right? And actually when you check this uh, folder to have a look, we don't have an index.php, we only have an index.html. Now how do we, uh, Completed. Let's use a curl command. We want to know this uh, DNS. Let's just copy from here. Control A, Control C. First to have. 
when we supply it normally. Right, we have password equals to the seed and me and username equals to me. Now, based on this description, do we need any uh, URL encoding? M space, you use this one. Single quote, we use this one. We just press end of hello first. Here. You see all the information I could have retrieved, right? You, you know HTML programming. This is a table. And you can see those uh, output are all here. For example, this is Alice. This one is Alice, then, then followed by Bobby. So you see all the information are gotten. Now, if we don't supply uh, the password, it's okay. We need we actually we need to put something here because it will it will test whether it's empty or not. Then to continue, right? Here we want to put. Uh, the techniques, for example, a single quote, then followed by the pound key. And how do we provide? Here is the empty space. Here's another empty space. Here is uh, the single quote. A quick way you may use an online URL encoding and copy this one. Yeah, I didn't put those URL encoding here. So we can uh, go online and find some links about your URL encoding. Type it here uh, in code. Then you get this one. Now, do we need to encode everything or just encode that after admin? Right? Or just use this part? You may have a try. Here. If we try all this stuff, or you do it manually. Here for, for the empty space, it says it's a percent 20. And for that a single quote, is a percent 27. Then you add one more empty space, percent for this pound T, percent 20. For this pound key, do we need uh, any codings? We can check this part. And is that a pound key? Uh, it looks like it's a percent 23. Is that a uh, pound key? This power key, percent 23. Now you see we didn't, uh, we do provide a password, right? We provide the correct password. Let's remove the correct password without anything. We can just see it. This is not a good password. And not the correct password. 
and we see we, we are able to log in and get all the information. Right, you see, send me all the information and so on. You may like to try this, uh, this one. Can you, uh, can you see? To try this one, where did it work? Here, the password, we put supply, a uh, wrong password, not the correct password. This does not work, so which means it says it could not resolve the host. So we only need to encode those parameters, not the whole string. Um, let's look at uh, the last subtask, task 2.3. We'll append a new SQL statement. In the about two attacks, we can only steal information from the database. It will be better if we can modify the database using the same vulnerability in the login page. An idea is to use SQL injection attack to turn one SQL statement into two. And with the second one, begin the update or delete statements. In SQL semicolon, is used to separate two SQL statements. And then let's see whether we can uh, construct these two statements. Here in this uh, login page, we type Alice as we have done in first two uh, subtasks. Through this way, we can log in without a password. Uh, if we want to uh, add a second sentence, use a semicolon. At the end, we want to comment out the password. Now, let's add a second uh, statement, for example, for deletion. Delete from deletion. So we may need some other way to find what the table name used in the application. Here, let's just suppose we, we want to know the table name. Let's say we want to delete a uh, copy. by this uh, pound key to comment out this uh, password. So which means uh, we don't need, need this password anymore. Now if we try login, we have some uh, SQL syntax error. It says uh, there are some syntax error near this uh, delete from credential where name equals Bobby. Here you see this stuff are uh, commented out at line three. So how could we find the problem? Let's check the source code. If we can show the SQL statements, that will be uh, better. So let's uh, try to modify the source code. Before that, let's make a backup for both this uh, SQL, for this uh, PHP source code and uh, the database. You can refer to uh, lab instruction, how to uh, backup and restore database and how to backup and restore source files. Here, Let's uh, back up our database. MySQL dump. What's the database name called users saved in a file? 
from Quota users. But it's QL. Type the password 012. And now you see uh, export the database here. Later on, if you want to restore it, just have this command to restore the database. For the source file, the unsafe home PHP. Let's copy this. Uh, login homepage to the current location. Here you may uh, save it under the same location. I would like to save it uh, under the lab 11 with a dot current location. Here I copied it here. Later on, if I want to restore it, just use this one, sudo copy this one to the target file. Uh, now let's uh, try to show the SQL statements after it's uh, processed by PHP. So we know this the SQL statements. So we can try to output it here. For example, we use a micro SQL. Control S, save it. It asks you to type a password, DES. If you use sudo to open this file, then you don't need to type the password. Yeah, authenticate. Okay, now it's saved. I want to see what this uh, SQL statement it looks like. So the statement is still here. We type login. We still get the same syntax error, but now we will see the SQL statement and what it looks like after it's processed by the PHP. Here, when you check this statement, uh, it uh, looks good. That's no errors. Right? Here is a comment out. Please pay attention if they're all in a single uh, sentence. Here is uh, just uh, wrapped up. You can copy this one and put it inside a text file to see it's in, in a single file because here we see it's just inside a single string, this SQL. And we can uh, copy this one here, copy this one, and then run in a SQL terminal. Here we have Bobby here. Not only we have six uh, employees. We can paste that statement we copied from the web page. Add a same column, press enter. You see no syntax error. It looks good. Right here. When you check this uh, result, and then because the Alice here, Alice show up, and it says uh, one of those affected. So now we want to see whether that Bobby is deleted or, or not. Here, actually, you will. I think that here we have two outputs. Now let's uh, check whether Bobby is removed or not. You see Bobby is removed. That output here it says one row affected. That row is uh, Bobby has been deleted. So now we see this, that's no syntax error. So what's the problem? Let's check the source code. Here the source code executes these SQL statements with this uh, query function. 
Now we don't know whether this is quite a formula can be used to delete uh, or modify the database. So we need to check it. the library uh, menu. So come to our companion website and add some references here. It use uh, PHP MySQL. Here is the query function. And we have a multi query. So it looks like when you check this uh, document, you can find the explanation of this MySQL. Uh, You can do this one by yourself and take this uh, query function out. It performs a query on the database. And uh, that mod query is used to execute. It says again, perform a query on the database. So the statement the statements are a little bit confusing. So if both are performing a query on the database, why we need a multi query and a query? Check the statement uh, explanation here. It says, I've killed one or more queries which are concatenated by a sign column. So I think this is the reason why our attack does not work. And this query, you didn't say it can uh, be used to run several uh, SQL statements. So let's uh, change the source code. We're going to query, we replace it with uh, mod query. Yeah, replace it with this mod query. Query, we change it to a mod query. And I'm going to use save it. The password D E E S. And this time we can comment out our debug statements. And let's save it. D E E S. Right now uh, let's uh, bind again, again. Since we already deleted Bob, Bobby, right? we already deleted Bobby, the time let's delete uh, Ryan. So in this place, we change this one to Ryan. Here, right? Now let's uh, log in. We need to check is uh, okay that looks good now let's log in now you see this time it does not show those errors so we can go to the terminal to see whether the line is deleted or not line ID is 3 Line is gone, so line is deleted. So this is the way, uh, how do we uh, modify the database, but in the real world, we cannot modify the source code. How could we modify the database? And we will learn in our next layer, task three and task four.